With Cataclastic set to launch later this summer, the number one question on your mind is probably, what class should I play? WoW's third expansion was first released December 7th of 2010, and if you're like us and played back then, congrats on suddenly feeling, well, old. Sandwiched in between Wrath and Mob, Cata would be a bridge between old and new. Class design was becoming more modernized, especially in PvP, and it's no wonder that some of the most iconic WoW videos came from this era. Whether it's Wreckful showcasing rogue control, or Swifty showing the power of a warrior one-shot macro, and then riding a skateboard immediately after. So, if you want to learn what class to main in the latest update to WoW Classic, be sure to stick around. And while you're waiting for the expansion to release, be sure to check out skillcap.com. We are the number one resource for learning World of Warcraft retail and classic with hundreds of hours of exclusive video content that we designed alongside the world's best players, including BlizzCon winners for WoW PvP and even six-time MDI champions for our new Mythic Plus website. And by the time Cataclysm launches, we're going to have revamped our classic site to get you instantly ready to dominate the next expansion. We even have two additional websites for League of Legends and Valorant if that's also your thing. And everything that we offer is covered under one subscription and a rank up guarantee that promises to deliver results. Yeah, that's right. We actually guarantee that you're going to gain rating across any of our games while using our site. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. Now, before we dive into each class one by one, there are some general changes that you should know about. For one, Cataclysm was the first expansion where cooldowns would start to become ubiquitous with PvP. Now, of course, cooldowns existed in previous expansions, but they didn't really define arena games. But with Cataclysm, Multiple classes got a mix of new offensive and defensive CDs. Kata would be the expansion where rogues would get smoke bomb, resto shamans would get their iconic spirit link totem, and warlocks would get demon soul, a powerful damage buff. This is why Kata would act as a bridge between old and new, because for the very first time in PvP history, cooldown-based gameplay was starting to emerge. This expansion would also be the first to give every healer a magic dispel. From Vanilla to Wrath, only Priests, Paladins, and Fell Hunters were capable of dispelling magic debuffs off their team. But this would change with the shattering of Azeroth, as now every healer had this game-defining utility. These passive buffs to healers were met by a nerf to healing reduction effects with Mortal Strike, Wound Poison, and others reducing healing by 25%, cut in half from previous expansions. Along with the buffs to healers, Kata would become the first expansion where balance would start to shift in the favor of defensive play. Games in this expansion will feel bursty, but can be quite drawn out since there are much better recovery tools and mana is less of an issue, especially for hybrids. Lower haste values means that certain classes and specs are going to be weaker at the start of the expansion, but are going to gain strength towards the end with higher stat values. And speaking of which, Kata is the expansion that introduced mastery to the game. And as you can imagine, this would come to revolutionize class design in the expansions to come, and some specs have extremely well scaling mastery throughout the expansion. But enough about the general stuff here. You're here to learn what makes each class feel unique. So let's start off with the pure DPS. The class that sees the biggest power creep in Kata is Rogue. With subtlety widely considered to be one of the best overall melee in the game, fitting into a wide variety of comps thanks to its impressive control, damage, and survivability. The expansion gives Rogues a new core ability with Smoke Bomb, which we're all familiar with today. But in Kata is exceptionally deadly, since its cooldown can be reset with preparation allowing rogues to outplay the two-minute cooldown on PvP trinkets. Rogues also get an ability called Redirect, allowing them to transfer combo points between enemy players. Now, this is a massive quality of life improvement from previous expansions and would eventually develop into the global combo point system that we know today. Another modern quality of life improvement is the introduction of Glyph of Blind. 
which allows rogues to safely blind targets with dots, since the glyph would automatically remove them, which wasn't the case in previous expansions. Rogues even get a talent that not only increased damage done to targets with bleeds, but would also cause gouge to not break to garrote, rupture, or hemorrhage ticks. Altogether, this gives rogues impressive control, which allows them to slot into a wide variety of comps and tackle the new cooldown trading meta. Rogues also get some new defensive tech. Combat Readiness is a new addition in Cataclysm, sharing a cooldown with Cloak of Shadows, but offering stacking physical damage reduction, giving rogues a second tool to deal with melee cleaves alongside evasion. Rogues also have some of the best self-healing in the game thanks to Recuperate, which is a zero cooldown finishing move that applies a healing over time effect and even grants energy. And if all this wasn't enough here, rogues even take increased healing from all sources thanks to an easily accessible passive on the assassination tree. All of this defensive strength means that rogues have a fairly unique playstyle during Cataclysm, as unlike previous expansions, they're tanky enough to actually go toe-to-toe -to -toe with other melee. There's no need to go for constant restelts. Another huge change from modern expansions is how rogues burst. During Shadow Dance, the majority of sub-rogue damage actually comes from Ambush instead of Eviscerate. Ambush has a lot of passive modifiers that make it hit hard by itself, which makes rogues feel deadly for every second of Shadow Dance. Rogue builds are typically split in two different directions, a Hemo build with improved recuperate for more tankiness, and then a separate build with puncturing wounds and waylay for more backstab damage. Both are completely viable for competitive play, having different advantages that are based on bracket and comp. Finally, rogues are also one of the biggest benefactors from PvE gear in the late expansion, having one of the two legendary weapons available in the game, along with some game-breaking trinkets, one of which is not even meant for rogues and has strength as its main stat. So overall, due to the sheer number of buffs they get going into Kata, sub-rogues are easily one of the best melee in the game throughout the entire expansion. They can play a wide variety of comps, partnering with both casters or melee, and even having the option to run triple DPS of all things. Another class that sees a significant power creep in Kata is Mage, who gains access to some game-changing abilities here, including Ring of Frost, which is actually instant cast, but shares a unique DR with Deep Freeze for Frost, but not Dragon's Breath, which is exclusive to Fire. Mages also get Glyph of Polymorph, which is a massive quality of life improvement, allowing them to reliably land CC against targets with dots. While both Frost and Fire are both viable for Arena, it's actually Fire that takes the slight edge in PvP. And what might surprise some viewers is that Fire is more or less a dot spec in Cataclysm. The spec is built around its primary cooldown, Combustion, which acts a whole lot different than its modern design. In Kata, Combustion combines all active damage over time effects into a separate Mega Dot, which can then be spread across the entire enemy team with Fire Blast if the Mage has an impact proc. In order to get the biggest Combustion, Fire Mages need to keep up Living Bomb while fishing for Hot Streak procs first by getting lucky with crits or by casting into frozen targets in order to benefit from Shatter. Once they get a Pyro proc, the goal is then to also use Frost Nova or a Cone of Cold Root to shatter a massive Pyroblast, creating more dots ready to be duplicated with combustion and then spread. Being able to consistently shatter your damage is vital as a Fire Mage, and you're rewarded for playing a bit more patient compared to other specs. But if you can manage to land a big instant Pyroblast crit and then spread your combustion with Fire Blast, you can rot the enemy team's health in a matter of seconds. Frost Mages adopt a much different playstyle, relying exclusively on Shatter in order to burst down targets through different spell combos. Some of this damage can be instant thanks to Fingers of Frost and Brain Freeze, which causes Frost Firebolt to be instant. Both of these procs can be generated by a new ability called Frostfire Orb, which is a spell that closely resembles Frozen Orb from modern expansions. So in order to set up some burst, mages will typically lead with Frostfire Orb first and continue to generate procs or instant damage. When they're able to free cast, they can even do some pretty scary burst with Frostbolt with a reduced cast time thanks to early frost. 
Kata is the expansion where Frost Mage casted damage is arguably at its peak, and you can instantly melt over 70% of someone's HP with a Shatter combo. It's honestly no wonder that Mitch Jones loved Cataclysm, and just like other expansions, Frost Mages can shatter directly into Deep Freeze, which can be a preferred method of bursting depending on group comp. So when it comes to control, both mage specs have similar goals here. Both Frost and Fire have the ability to consistently land CC on the healer in 3v3 due to Deep Freeze and Dragon's Breath and Polymorph. Frost will place more emphasis on landing these setups since its damage comes exclusively from single target burst, and Fire, on the other hand, can CC the enemy healer too, but it's more rewarded for spreading big damage across the entire enemy team, including the healer. Now, because of this, there is less incentive to push for CC and a greater reward for simply pushing in and cleaving down the enemy team. Defensively, Mages are actually pretty strong, especially into Wizards due to Mage Armor, which reduces the duration of magic debuffs significantly. So if you play Shadow Priest, Affliction Warlock, or Balanced Druid, then Mages might be pretty annoying. No matter what Mage spec you decide to play, do bear in mind that the class does have a relatively high skill floor, especially considering that relative strength of Hunters, which we'll discuss here in a moment. Overall, though, both Fire and Frost are definitely powerful options in the Cataclysm meta and are extremely rewarding to play due to their high skill ceiling. The one class that gives Mage a massive challenge is Hunter, with Marksmanship being the preferred spec for PvP throughout the expansion. Many players would consider Marks to be the best overall range spec in PvP due to their pets of all things, but a little bit more on that later. Kata gives the Hunter class some flashy new tech, including Camouflage, which acts in an almost identical way to the ability we know in modern expansions. Cataclysm also changes the secondary resource of Hunter from mana to focus, giving them less overall downtime in DPS. Instead of needing to regen mana with Aspect of the Viper, Hunters typically weave in between Aspect of the Fox, which allows them to cast while they're moving, and then the traditional aspect of the Hawk, giving them increased attack power across the board. Now, since these aspects are off the global, you can simply macro them into attacks, so it's not as complicated as you might think it is. Hunters also get their healing reduction shifted from Aimed Shot to Widow Venom, reducing healing taken by 25%, which is similar to other Mortal Strike effects, but not really having any cooldown. The most unique tech that Hunters have during this expansion is not really what you would expect it to be, and is actually related to dismissing their pet altogether of all things. This is because pet ability cooldowns are tied to pets themselves, which means Hunters can essentially reset the cooldown on Roar of Sacrifice by dismissing their current pet and resummoning a new one. It's quite common to see Roar of Sacrifice have over 50% uptime due to this, making Hunters a massive headache for specs that rely on crits and burst damage, and this is exactly why Hunters are considered god tier. And in hearing this, you might think the best strategy is to simply just kill the pet, but once it's dead, Hunters can even abandon it with a simple macro to instantly resummon a new one ready to Roar of Sacrifice again and make your day even worse. Surprisingly, the pet of choice throughout the expansion is actually the monkey, whose signature ability is called Bad Manor, a disorient effect that literally involves flinging its own poop at the target, as if it could get any worse for you. Yes, it is very BM. Along with Scattershot, this ability makes it much easier to land traps, especially on targets at a distance, and just like Roar of Sacrifice, Bad Manor can also be reset by dismissing and resummoning multiple monkeys. So, if you want to grief hunters in this expansion, simply head on over to Stranglehorn Vale and farm monkey hides like your life depends on it. Hunters sometimes start games with a cat in order to get a temporary attack power buff for their team once the gates open, but then swap back to an army of monkeys for the rest of the game. Kata also redesigned Freezing Arrow into Trap Launcher, which can even be used to launch snake traps across the map which will even root targets once it activates. While Mark's Hunters might not have the highest DPS in the game, their burst damage is still quite impressive. Chimera Shot can do some impressive damage on its own and is an almost guaranteed crit on high health targets with careful aim, 
This alone makes Mark's Hunters absolutely deadly since their impressive control kit combined with high burst damage is a big execution test for many healers. Hunters can even do a simple burst combo and camo, sequencing an aimed shot and chimera to land at the same time. This is one reason why Hunters are even able to play double DPS comps in a 2v2 and triple DPS comps in 3v3 since they do enough damage in the opener to instantly win games. The last pure DPS class we have to cover is Warlock, with Affliction arguably being at its peak during this expansion. Warlocks are one of the many classes that picked up a new offensive cooldown during Kata, with Demon Soul increasing dot damage by 20% while a Fell Hunter is summoned. This allows Warlocks to put empowered dots on one target, and then with another new ability called Soul Swap, they can duplicate the dots onto another with a Glyph. This allows Affliction Warlocks to be a true rot spec, and damage over time effects are much more powerful during this era compared to modern expansions. Another new addition to the Warlock class is Fell Flame, which is an instant cast range spell that instantly extends the duration of Unstable Affliction on the target. If you play Warlock, this will definitely be one of your favorite abilities and something you had wish existed in retail for the past few expansions. Keeping up Unstable Affliction is important since healers have a spammable dispel. It's common to see Warlocks apply UA to targets just to fear them since the backlash effect can make healers think twice about mashing dispel. And by keeping UA up, it also prevents other dots from being dispelled, which even helps buff their Fell Hunter's damage considerably. Shadow Bite damage scales based on the number of active dots, which ties in pet management with dot maintenance. And speaking of pet management, another new ability in Cataclysm is Soul Burn, which functions very similar to its modern variation, but with slightly less power. This ability is typically used with Healthstone as a burst heal or to quickly resummon a pet if it dies. In order to summon a pet, Warlocks need Soul Shards, which can only be generated in one way. Soul Harvest is a rather weird ability acting kind of like a mage's evocation, but only restoring health and generating soul shards, but it's unusable while you're in combat. Luckily, it can be used in the starting room, allowing you to go into each game with full shards ready. Now, at this point, you're gonna be wondering about their survivability. Aside from passive damage reduction from Soul Link, Warlocks typically play in Demon Armor, which increases their healing taken by 20% and gives extra physical damage reduction. The combination of these two passives make Warlocks remarkably tanky and one of the easiest classes to heal. The Affliction Warlock playstyle is quite similar to its modern variation, though, with significantly better sustained damage. Now, it might be quite surprising to many players to experience just how powerful dots can be. Warlocks spend most of the game bouncing between damage maintenance and control, keeping dots rolling across multiple targets while being quick to shut down kills or reverse pressure with well-timed fears and spell locks. And speaking of pressure, Death Knights also have a strong presence in PvP during Cataclysm, with both Unholy and Frost having viability in competitive play. Between the two, Unholy definitely takes the lead in Arena, due in part to a core new ability, Necrotic Strike. This ability applies healing absorption to the target and has a multiplying effect on any healing reduction effects like Mortal Strike. This is one reason why Unholy DKs pair exceptionally well with Hunters and even Warriors, since the combined pressure of MS and Necrotic can be brutal to deal with. Now, what's worth noting is that Necrotic Strike also applies a casting speed debuff to the target, which is just one reason DKs are considered soft counters to many casters. Another new ability available to DKs is Dark Simulacrum. Now, while this ability has fallen out of fashion in recent retail expansions, it's simply a baseline class spell in Cataclysm. Dark Sim is an ability with an enormously high skill cap, too. Good DKs will time this ability to steal major defensives or crowd control and can swing momentum instantly if it's successful. As a pet class, Unholy DKs need to take full advantage of their various minions. Their ghoul is a key part of their toolkit, having a pseudo-ranged interrupt and a stun which becomes even stronger when the DK transforms their ghoul into an undead monstrosity with Dark Transformation. The main burst cooldown for Unholy DK is their Gargoyle, and the best DKs are going to snapshot its damage using different trinket procs or temporary buffs. 
Using Gargoyle when damage buffs are active are going to empower its damage for the entire 30 second duration. And then the challenge becomes keeping targets in line of sight with grips and stuns so that the Gargoyle can pump. So during any burst window, DKs are going to typically use Strangulate, which silences for 5 seconds and can be even longer with a glyph. Overall, the Unholy DK playstyle revolves around disruption, keeping targets passively locked down with snares, while being quick to shut down cast through stuns, silences, and interrupts. Frost, on the other hand, takes a much different approach. Much like its current retail design, the spec centers around its one-minute cooldown, Pillar of Frost. DKs are going to aim to set up kills around this CD window, then once it's over are going to resort to more evasive play, typically around pillars, keeping their targets immobilized with Chains of Ice. Frost DKs also carry over Hungering Cold from Wrath, which can be incorporated into these one-minute setups as an AoE CC for the enemy team. Overall though, because of its reliance on cooldowns to deal damage, Frost is typically seen as the weaker spec. So in any case, playing either Frost or Unholy are going to make you a bane to any caster. Mobility is quite limited in Kata, and simply keeping Chains of Ice up is generally enough to keep someone locked down, especially if you get support from your team. So what might come as a surprise is that Warrior is actually considered one of the weakest viable classes in Arena. Arms is undeniably the best option for PvP, and although it might not be considered high tier, it'll likely be at its strongest during the first season. Warriors get a few new spells in Kata, including Heroic Leap, which essentially replaces Intercept as their secondary gap closer, and while this might seem like a net loss, the cooldown of charge is also significantly reduced as well, giving Warriors decent mobility in the expansion. In place of Intercept Stun, which shares a cooldown with Charge, Warriors get a relatively niche ability called Throwdown. This ability is functionally similar to Kidney Shot, allowing Warriors to pin down kill targets while they burst, but unlike other stuns, it actually has a knockdown effect built in as well. This makes it slightly awkward to Trinket though, since the stun's going to be removed, but your character will still be knocked down for a second. This can make it one of the most scary abilities to deal with when under pressure. And speaking of which, Arms Warriors get two unique bursting tools. Colossus Smash, which allows them to burst through armor, Deadly Calm, which removes the rage cost on abilities, and even Inner Rage, which is mostly used as a resource dump. If you remember the old Swifty one-shot macros, there were just all of these abilities combined into one, which is what allowed Warriors to do some big burst in Season 9. But what really defines Warrior in Cataclysm is defense utility and disruption. Rallying Cry was added to the game, which is the commanding shout that we know today. And along with improved hamstring, Arms Warriors have multiple peeling options and can deny CC chains like Blind Sap from Rogues and Scatter Trap from Hunters with Disarm or Intervene. It's also pretty common for Warriors to play with Gag Order, which gives them a ranged blanket silence on a 30 second cooldown. And now there wasn't really much micro CC in Cataclysm compared to Modern WoW, so having a spell like this one is pretty powerful. The damage kit of Warrior is slightly different to the one that we know today though, with Mortal Strike and Overpower being core damaging abilities, and Rend Ticks granting Overpower procs. Because Rend is so important to their overall damage, you might see Warriors put points into the prot tree for Blood and Thunder, allowing them to spread Rend with Thunderclap. Warriors can also play a build that incorporates Slam as a filler global into the rotation. And although this ability has a short cast time, it deals significantly more damage than Heroic Strike, which is the alternative filler global. And while it might not be the most overpowered melee in Kata, Arms Warrior is still good and it retains a very classic feel to its playstyle with modern improvements sprinkled in. Stance dancing is less of a thing, which means more time to focus on the good stuff, damage, and disruption. Shaman is the first hybrid class that we're going to cover here. Here there is a lot of variability between the strength of each spec in PvP, but it is unquestionable that Restoration is one of the most dominant healers throughout the expansion. But before getting into the details, Unleash Elements is just one new spell that would come to define the Shaman class as a whole throughout this expansion. Depending on the Shaman's weapon enchant, Unleash would modify the next attack or heal, giving more healing for Resto or more damage for Ellie and Enhancement, and is a core part of gameplay for all three specs. 
And as we mentioned, Restoration is without a doubt the strongest shaman spec for PvP, being a huge winner from the addition of Mastery. Resto Mastery increases healing done to targets at lower HP, which as you can imagine is quite strong in PvP, especially during Kata where burst damage is incredibly high. Much like today, the Shaman Healing Kit is based primarily on Instant Cast, including Riptide, Healing Stream Totem, and Earth Shield with the new addition of Unleash Elements to empower Riptide Cast even further. While hard casting spells is sometimes needed, the majority of healing output is going to come from these four spells alone. Another source of instant cast healing actually comes from Dispelling, as Resto, Cleanse Spirit removes both Curse and Magic effects, and is even going to heal the target thanks to a talent called Cleansing Waters. This makes Resto exceptionally good into casters, especially Affliction Warlocks. Resto is also going to pick up Spirit Link Totem during Cataclysm, which was a pretty groundbreaking ability at the time, especially considering totems are usable while silenced. Having a major cooldown like this in a burst expansion is definitely a big plus. The main counter to Spirit Link is actually Rogues, since Smoke Bomb completely negates its effect, and because of this, Shamans can be really great kill targets for any Rogue team. In fact, getting trained can be an issue for Resto Shamans in general, with comps like Ret DK, Thug Cleave, and TSG all having really high uptime and some incredibly scary damage. Because of their susceptibility to getting trained, Resto Shamans typically adopt a non-interactive playstyle. Unlike the modern expansions where Shamans are considered an aggressive healer, Cataclysm encourages them to play much more passive, sitting comfortably near a pillar and carrying with their healing output while being disruptive to any nearby casters. The other two Shaman specs are considered to be a bit off-meta, but have some niche quirks that can make them interesting to play in Kata. Now, despite being considered a mid-tier caster, Elemental Shaman damage is actually quite scary while being backed up by an extremely disruptive toolkit. With the introduction of Unleash Elements, Ellie can do a ton of burst damage by combining a Casted Lava Burst into an Earth Shock, whose damage is buffed by a passive called Fulmination. Both Ellie and Enhance are also able to safely play with Reverberation, reducing the cooldown of Wind Shear down to 5 seconds, which makes it the shortest CD kick in the entire game. Kata also redesigns Ellie's Dispel Protection, turning Lava Flows into a passive that increases spell haste by a remarkable 90% when Flame Shock is dispelled. This can be used on any damaging spell or even Hex and off healing. Ellie also picks up a new Glyph, allowing them to cast Lightning Bolt while moving. Although this spell is more or less a filler global, it's a nice quality of life improvement considering Ellie Shamans are the kill target in most matchups, so a lot of running is definitely going to be needed. The reason for this is due to the loss of Astral Shift. This passive from Wrath gave them 30% damage reduction while stunned, but it's removed in Cataclysm, leaving Ellie Shamans as a spec with limited defensive options. Because of this, Ellie Shamans almost exclusively play with other casters, relying on the defensive support of peels from mages and warlocks. Enhancement is a relatively niche melee in Cataclysm, although weaker compared to other melee DPS, it still has some very powerful utility as well. Enhance keeps Maelstrom Weapon going into Kata, which offers the spec Instant Cast CC through Hex or a Quick Heal at 5 stacks. Defensively, Enhance does have an edge over Ellie thanks to Shamanistic Rage, reducing all damage taken by 30%, while also removing debuffs in the process, even being usable while you're stunned. As mentioned, Enhance also plays a highly disruptive role in Arena, relying on its 5-second Wind Shear cooldown, Grounding Totem, and Tremor to shut down kills. Enhance is played best from the perspective of a support class prioritizing utility over damage. You have to really lean into your off-healing potential to make this spec really work. Druid is the second true hybrid class of Cataclysm, with every spec having varying degrees of viability in Arena. Of the three specs, it's actually Feral that comes out on top, and as we'll discuss in a moment, it might actually contend with Rogue as the best overall melee in the game. Every Druid spec gets access to some unique abilities too, the first being Skull Bash, which is a pseudo-ranged kick that's usable in cat or bear form. This spell is used most by Feral Druids since the cooldown is much shorter for them, and it's used less often by Resto, and rarely by Boomkins since this is the expansion that gives them Solar Beam. 
All three druid specs also get this quirky ability called Wild Mushroom, which allows them to plant shrooms on the ground to detonate on demand. Not really game-breaking for Resto or Feral, but I guess they're kind of neat. Kato's also the expansion that gives Druids Stampeding Roar, and while this might seem minor, it'll be very important to Feral Druid, since Kata is the only expansion where they can't shift out of Roots. The only way to break Roots as a Feral Druid is by using Dash or this new ability. Frenzied Regen is also reworked in Kata and is a relatively complicated ability to use. Instead of healing you by a flat percentage, it'll instantly bring your HP up to exactly 30%, which means you get the most value by using it very low on HP. Now that we know what's new for all Druid specs, let's go over each one by one, starting with Resto. While this might seem a bit shocking to retail players, Resto Druid is actually one of the weaker healers in Kata, having an extremely high skill floor compared to Shaman or Paladin. This is because Druids need to be very proactive during this expansion. There's no instant recovery option like Overgrowth, and most of your healing output actually comes from Rejuvenation and Life Bloom, which can just be purged or spell stolen pretty easily. Resto is also centered around Swift Mend as a primary heal. Kata is the expansion that introduces Efflorescence as a bonus heal that procs under targets when Swift Mend is used, and this AoE circle actually does quite a bit of healing. In Kata, Tree Form is also converted into a healing cooldown, making regrowth and entangling roots instant and allowing you to use Life Bloom on multiple targets. So the only weird thing about this CD is that once you leave Tree Form, you can't go back, even if you just used it. This adds to the proactive nature of Resto since you need to plan around using your biggest cooldown. Just like Shamans, Druids are also pretty susceptible to getting trained. Although they might have the best mobility on paper compared to other healers, it can still be difficult to actually get away from classes like Rogues and DKs, who have no problem tunneling Druids down. At the same time, Cyclone is one of the most powerful CC tools in the game, especially since it doesn't DR with fear effects like it does in modern expansions. This makes Druid positioning a little bit technical. At times, you want to push in to assist your team with CC, but you need to be careful to avoid any swaps while you're doing so. Overall, though, Resto Druid is a healer that rewards intelligent, proactive gameplay, and although it might be considered an underdog, it's still highly competitive in the right comp. Feral, on the other hand, is expected to be one of the most dominant specs throughout the expansion for a few reasons. For one, Feral Druid control is unmatched thanks to Predatory Strikes. The ability to instantly cyclone an enemy target after using a finisher allows them to easily dictate the pace of the game, especially now since they have an interrupt to go with it. And even though Feral Druids can now be rooted, the spec still has insane mobility, especially thanks to Feral Charge which when used in bear form is actually a shorter 15 second cooldown and even gives a special damage bonus when used. But what really defines the strength of Feral and Cataclysm is their survivability. Unlike Dragonflight, where Ferals are more or less a victim spec, Cataclysm turns Feral into an absolute unit inside of Arena, where it's almost unkillable in bear form, having dramatically more armor and even taking 18% less passive damage thanks to the natural reaction talent. And even while in cat form, Feral Druids take an additional 20% increased healing on top of having some impressive off heals of their own. So to complete their toolkit, Feral Druid damage is actually pretty strong, with a full set of bleeds being more than enough to chunk through the entire health bar of an opponent, especially when snapshotted with Tiger's Fury, which is much stronger in this expansion. Boomy is in an interesting place in Cataclysm, and is pretty similar to Ellie Shaman in the sense that it has some impressive damage, but it's very likely to be trained literally all game. Much like its current retail design, most of Boomkin damage comes from two dots, Moonfire and Insect Swarm, and then Sunfire, which is simply Moonfire while in Solar Eclipse. Eclipse states in Cataclysm are much different than retail. Boomkins have an Eclipse Bar, which works almost like a pendulum as the Druid cast one set of spells to move from one Eclipse state to the other. Getting into Eclipse regularly is what gives Druid their mana, which is crucial in order to off-heal. Boomkins are going to generally want to be in Lunar Eclipse because Starfall is categorized only as Arcane damage. Once they have dots rolling and hit their Eclipse, you can then expect a lot of AoE damage. 
For single target burst, Boomkins gains Star Surge and Cataclysm, which normally has a cast time, but can be made instant by keeping up dots and getting a Shooting Stars proc. And because of how much dot maintenance is required, Balanced Druids rarely have time to hard cast, especially since they're the target most games. And because Mass Entanglement isn't in the game, Solar Beam is used more like an interrupt than anything else. While it's definitely possible to hard cast Entangling Roots into a beam, many healers are going to be quick to notice and instantly dispel it. Unlike the other two specs, Wild Mushrooms are actually pretty important as balance since they gain an additional talent that adds an AoE snare effect to their explosion. Good Druids are going to spawn mushrooms in key places, covering every corner of a pillar in order to make it easier to kite. So if you're willing to be trained most games, but want to deal insane AoE damage, then Balanced Druid might be right for you. It's a spec that definitely rewards you for doing big numbers and is extremely deadly when paired with high-tier wizards. Our next class is Priest, with both Disc and Shadow both being extremely viable in competitive play. Kata gives Priest one of their most iconic PvP abilities, Leap of Faith, otherwise known as Life Grip. This spell was pretty groundbreaking at the time, since there really wasn't any way to control your teammates' positioning then, but Leap of Faith now allowed Priest to make clutch plays in Arena. Priests are also one of the biggest winners when it comes to tier sets, with both Shadow and Disc wearing Gladiator's Mooncloth for the 4-set bonus, which adds a freedom effect to Power Word Shield. This allows Disc Priest to be a highly aggressive healer, getting rewarded for making key offensive plays, especially considering Disc had the absolute best defensive magic dispel in the game, and unlike other healers, it actually removed two magic debuffs at once. This single difference allowed Disc Priest to carry enormous momentum for their team and is why they're part of some of the most electrifying comps in the expansion. The Disc Priest healing kit carries over a lot from Wrath, with Shield, Palm, Renew, and Penance being core healing abilities, and Pain Suppression acting as a powerful cooldown trade that can be used while stunned. Rotationally, Priest should feel very familiar here, and a big learning curve to the spec is min-maxing borrowed time. The temporary haste bonus from Power Word Shield can be used to get a faster penance or snapshot in Empowered Renew. Kata also adds a new cooldown in the form of Power Word Barrier. Although this spell is quite strong in recent retail expansions, its mere 25% damage reduction is less impactful. In any case, having an additional cooldown is a huge bonus, since Disc Priest can be a trainable healer for select melee cleaves. And even though they might be the most offensive healer, the reliance on a single spell school can make them great targets to tunnel down if multiple kicks are available. But despite this one weakness, Disc Priest is still one of the best healers you can play in Kata, definitely beating out Holy, which won't really see competitive play until Mist of Pandaria. Now, for those of you wanting to experience the other side of Priest, Shadow is definitely an interesting spec in Cataclysm, having one of the most unique playstyles of all time. Kata is the expansion that adds more dispel protection to VT through Sin and Punishment, which causes the temporary horror effect we know today whenever Vampiric Touch is dispelled. As a result, Shadow Priests have a lot of comp options with other high-tier wizards, with Shadow Play and Shatter being staples throughout the entire expansion. Shadow also has its iconic Stun Silence combo, adding additional synergies with other casters and even allowing it to pair well with sub rogues for an added layer of control. Adding to this is the sheer amount of utility Shadow Priest offer, having the newly added Life Grip on top of a 0.5 second cast time mass dispel, which means Shadow is the only DPS back that can consistently dispel magic effects off their teammates. If you are a healer, Having a Shadow Priest on your team is a luxury, since it means sitting far less CC. But the true unique aspect of Shadow Priest in Cataclysm is its damage profile, which starts as you might expect, slowly dotting up targets in order to start a damage ramp. Part of this ramp includes building Shadow Orb stacks, which can then be spent in order to burst with Mind Blast and the newly added spell, Mind Spike. Now, the interesting thing is that Mind Spike removes dots on the target but adds a stacking buff to the Priest that increases the crit chance of Mind Blast. Because of this, Priest will consume their orbs with three Mind Spikes in a row, and then burst with an instant Mind Blast that is pretty much guaranteed to crit. 
To some people, Cataclysm was the peak of Shadow Priest design in PvP. It had virtually everything you could want as a hybrid DPS. Amazing utility, lots of control, and a versatile damage kit that can meld to different situations. That brings us to Paladin, with Holy arguably being the second best healer throughout the expansion, and Rhett being a threatening and versatile melee. Kata is the expansion that gives an interrupt to both specs, with Rebuke actually being the shortest healer kick, considering Resto Shamans typically don't play with the 5 second wind shear. In any case, having an interrupt is a massive quality of life improvement for both specs. Another new ability to Paladins is Guardian of the Ancient Kings, which as you can see by the tooltip on the screen, functions a bit differently for well, literally every spec. And with a 5 minute cooldown, you already know it's probably pretty good. For Holy, this ability is just a healing duplicator. When summoned, the Guardian's going to proceed to duplicate your direct heals on the current target, and then splash over 10% of the healing to nearby friendly targets. In an expansion with high burst damage, this is a massively powerful cooldown. For Rhett, Guardian is more or less an additional modifier granting stacking strength that can be paired with other major cooldowns. So what we'll discuss in just a moment is that Ret CDs are pretty nasty and are even the backbone behind some 3 DPS comps. But before we get into it, let's cover Holy Paladin. If you're coming from Wrath, you already know that Holy is a wall of cooldowns, and this doesn't change in Cataclysm. Having sacrifice on a 90 second cooldown and with an emergency bop, Paladins have multiple ways to block kills, and in fact, their cooldown strength might actually make them the best healer in Season 9, where cooldowns are disproportionately strong. Holy Paladins have two different directions they can build. One is an offensive spec with Denounce that allows them to safely spam Exorcism, which will then apply a debuff and prevent targets from critting. The other Holy Paladin build is a bit more traditional, putting points into Conviction for some additional healing. Cataclysm also gives Holy Paladins a relatively unique passive called Speed of Light, which adds a sprint effect to Divine Protection. This can be used to kite to safety with freedom or even avoid AoE fears from priests. Holy Paladins also fit quite well into the bursty meta thanks to the nature of their healing. Because of a passive called Last Word, Holy Paladins are rewarded for holding on to burst heals until their target is low. Once their target is below 35% HP, Word of Glory has an almost guaranteed crit chance and if it crits, then the target is typically safe. In fact, it's this exact passive that makes Rets so strong defensively and even a staple in 3 DPS comps. Rets even have an additional passive called Selfless Healer, which increases Word of Glory healing when it isn't used on themselves. This makes them into an actual off healer, which can even challenge the HPS of actual healing specs. Another reason Rhett is so good in Kata is Repentance which it carries over from previous expansions. Having an instant cast range CC as a melee is quite good, and it's once again a backbone to 3 DPS comps. None of this utility and control would matter if Reds didn't have damage though, and trust us, their burst is pretty scary in Kata. Of course, Reds have Avenging Wrath and the newly added Guardian of Ancient Kings, but what's really broken is their new in-cap ability called Zealotry which allows them to generate insane amounts of holy power, which can even be used to spam out damage while weaving in those Word of Glories. And as a pseudo-healer, Rets are even quite tanky themselves thanks to the newly added Sacred Shield. This is basically a cheat death mechanic that gives Rets a massive shield at low HP every 60 seconds, even causing them to take extra healing. So, to wrap up, if you want to play a class that can handle a bursty meta, then Paladin is definitely a good choice for you. Both Holy and Rhett are expected to do quite well, with new tech to tackle the new expansion. As one of the bridges between old and new, Kata is an exciting expansion for any fan of PvP. Virtually every class has a viable spec, and every spec feels high tier. Obviously, there are some winners and some losers, but the game feels fun when everyone feels powerful, and that's definitely true for WoW's latest classic expansion. And if you want to hit those raiding goals that you crave in Retail, Classic, or even League of Legends in Valorant, be sure to check out SkillCap.com. With one subscription for as little as $6.99 a month, you get instant access to thousands, literally thousands, of exclusive videos that are designed with one purpose in mind, to make sure you can hit your raiding goals. And we're so confident that we can deliver on this promise 
that we even offer a rank up guarantee. Yeah, you're gonna climb rating while using our guides or you're gonna get a full refund, no questions asked. So what are you waiting for? Visit the links below to get started with an exclusive discount offer. Anyway guys, we wanna thank you all for watching and we'll see you soon.